Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggleville 2 YouTube channel. For this video, we're going to talk about and install a luggage rack for this here 1973 Corvette. Among Corvette uh, enthusiasts, Corvette owners, the luggage rack is really a hot topic. It's kind of a love-hate relationship. For me personally, the reason I wanted the luggage rack is the rear deck here is it's large and mostly plain. And I like shiny things, <laughs> so adding the luggage rack adds a little, breaks up this rear deck a little bit, adds some shine to the back, which speaking of shine, don't pay any attention to how dirty the car is, that's a living on a dirt road problem. But it also does add some utility. This is a vehicle with T-tops. In later years, you can actually get a strap or like a locking mechanism to actually attach your T-tops to the luggage rack. And I believe in those later years, the reason it's possible, I think they're a different size, smaller than these. Anyway, there's two types of luggage racks. There's six hole and there's eight hole. And then from there, you could get chrome or stainless steel. I got stainless steel because I don't want to deal with the pitting and uh, additional maintenance that chrome would have over the years. I'll also put a link down below to this luggage rack if you're interested. But it also, in addition to, in later years, being able to store your T-tops, you could legitimately use it for luggage or other things. It's a two-seater car. If you have the T-tops in the rear storage compartment, I have a uh, cushioned zip-up bag that they go in. It literally takes up the entire space, so much so that you can't even open up the doors to get to the little uh, cubbies back there. So you have absolutely zero storage. And if you're doing anything more than just out for a cruise real quick, you can't do much with it. Even if you wanted to stay overnight somewhere, you can't. There is no place to put a bag, especially if you have a passenger. So there is a utility to it, depending on how you use your car. If you like the look of it, or if you like the utility of it, and you plan on keeping your car for any length of time, I'd say go ahead and put it on. But if you are flipping the vehicle, or if you plan on selling it in the near future, or just are very concerned about the resale value you definitely should not be putting the luggage rack on because to install it we need to drill holes in the car that's not something that's easily fixable and if you left it on there's a lot of people who just won't buy the car with a luggage rack on it because they know how much work it would be to remove it if they don't like the luggage rack also the luggage rack was never uh, an option that was installed at the factory when it left the factory, not a single one ever had a luggage rack. It was a dealer installed option. So if you have the people who are uber fanatics about the car being as original as possible, the luggage rack is technically not original in addition to those holes. So just something to chew on if you're contemplating getting one of these luggage racks or not. Now the other thing was mine came with a copy of the assembly manual that shows where to locate the luggage rack but it's not real detailed, not real great. If I remember, I'll try and put a scan of this down below. But because it was dealer installed, there is some variance in where it goes. Obviously you want it centered, but how high up the deck do you want it? And you'll notice online if you look up pictures, whether people have coupes or convertibles, uh, later years, earlier years, people have it positioned in different places. I looked at a lot of pictures to try and get an idea of where I want to install it. And I think we'll, we'll set up the rack on the car here just to get a kind of an idea. But I, I feel like I know where I want it to sit. But it, there doesn't seem to be a 100% consistent and accurate answer to where it's supposed to be. One thing I did want to show you is how it gets installed before we actually go through the process of doing it. Because this is a six hole, you get six of these little rubber plugs. They're almost like a rivet nut kind of deal. We have threads at the bottom. The bolt goes through. This is going to sit on the deck there. You're going to boop, put it right in there. You put a bolt in and then as you tighten it, it squeezes this, which makes this fatter and it locks it in place. So on top of that, what you'll see on top of the, the deck of the car is a little rubber seal. There's a washer. 
There's the stand. And then the rack sits right there. And obviously the bolt goes through the whole thing and tightens down to that first piece I showed you. And here's how long of a bolt you're talking about. And here's how long that bolt is. That we're... That's the second time. To be honest with you, it is slightly nerve wracking because you definitely don't want to put it on crooked. And because the position varies a little bit front to back, you don't want to put it in a position and then later be upset with how you did it. Also, two rails of the rack are going to be just on opposing sides of the gas cap, uh, the door. So obviously you don't want to install it in a position where your door hits the luggage rack because that would suck. If we look down the side a little bit, so I've seen people install it all over the place. So for this body style, I've seen some people that are just past the crease. It'll end kind of splitting it in half there. I've seen people just at the crease. I've seen people a little above the crease. And then I saw some people install it like way up here, which I thought looked ridiculous myself. Obviously it sits on the stand, so it would be raised up a little bit, but this is about the lowest that I've seen anyone install it. In this area, pretty much even with that crease seems to be the most common that I've seen. I've seen some people just above that crease, which I think I like the best, although where I have it right now I think is too far. I think it should come back just a little bit, but I think I like it a little above the crease. And then I've seen people even put it way up here, which I think what they were doing is centering it from the back window to the back, um, and that I think looks ridiculous. I can't do that, but I have seen other people do it that way. As I said, for me, I think just a hair above that crease is where I like it positioned. And let me show you how close your gas door is here. See, I'm not completely centered, but you do not have much room for error with that. So no matter how your measurements come out, obviously you want to be able to open up your gas door. Now I'm going to measure off the window frame coming back on either side and probably off this line here because this gap is going to be very obvious once it's installed if you have it crooked or uh, misaligned left to right. I think that'll look Pretty sharp once we get it on there. My measurement from the bottom of the window frame to the horizontal line there is 19 and 5 eighths on both sides, right on the money. So we'll center it left to right and then recheck that measurement to make sure everything looks straight. It actually helps looking at it through the camera. Like it gives me a better idea of what I'm doing here. All right. You see we got some little starter marks with a small drill bit, all six of them. Did that while the luggage rack was still sitting in place. So measuring from the window frame down, we are 19 and 5 eighths. Then measuring from the tail to uh, the seam between the stainless steel and that rubber boot at the end was 4 and 3 16 And then it's about 2 inches from here to here where the bolt hole was to this corner two inches on both sides and then also was centered with the gas cap which is pretty important just for the fact that that's going to be the most obvious thing obviously besides just being able to lift it when people are looking at it those two bars right here it's going to be pretty obvious if you're this will be more obvious than if this was off so if things don't come out perfectly and you have to split the difference somewhere now to get those boots in we have to drill a half inch hole so we got to get the big drill bit. We have the gas tank below these two. There's also a reinforcement panel that the instructions say you have to go to. This should be pretty hollow underneath for those four. And we just keep our fingers crossed hoping that it's right. One hole down. 
Before we get too carried away, I do want to make sure the little rubber guy fits in there. I'm also probably going to put it back on and make sure everything else still lines up before we drill a second hole. All right, that fit in pretty easy. Just get an idea there. I think we're good for the second hole. Everything looks like it's lining up, so we're doing good. Four holes to go. The four corners are all done. We'll throw it back on just to make sure the center two still line up. Now the gas tank is under the center two and the instructions or the page from the assembly manual says that there's also a reinforcement brace that you're gonna go through. So this one, I'm gonna be uh, taking my time a little bit on the drilling just to make sure um, we uh, do it right. So far so good. Let's get these two middle ones. So I drilled the, the left middle hole. You can see the plug sticking out right there, the corner of the paper. It drilled like all the other ones. And as I'm looking at the sheet here, it's dated August 31st, 76. And here it says, drill must also pierce reinforcement inner panel at center rear attachment. Fuel tank is directly below. There was no extra reinforcement or anything. So maybe that's just for later years. Mine came out just like all the others. So we're gonna drill the last hole. All six holes are drilled. Just need to throw her on, start bolting it up. So we already got the rubbers in there. So it's gonna go this rubber, washer, stand, uh, rack, and then screw. Got all the screws started. We're going to slowly tighten them, make sure we have everything lined up, have the, the stand in the middle of the washer and everything. And then we'll also make sure our measurements stay the same because there might be a little bit of play front to back, left to right, however it goes. Got it all tightened down and I think it turned out pretty good. Still open the gas door. Look at the gap there. There's not much room for air. Now the only problem I had 
was these two center ones. If you can see this one, it's not even touching the rubber there. This one, it is, but I'm really not comfortable making these any tighter. I don't think the stands, any of them are different heights. I think they're all the same. But this is pretty tight, but yet not crushing the rubber on the bottom. So we may wait after a little bit and see if we can retighten these screws after it kind of settles in. But overall, I think it turned out pretty good. It'd be nice to see what it looks like when the car is washed. Of course, one trip down the gravel road and it's going to look like this again. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe for our subscriber, and I'll see you next time.